Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is iatrogenesis, which is harm from healthcare. So, if we have, if we work in healthcare, we have to understand this term iatrogenesis. It's a little funny sounding. It comes from two Greek roots. The first one, iatros, which means physician, and the second one, genesis, which means origin. So, this is pain, suffering, side effects, even potentially death as a result of medical care itself. That's what iatrogenesis is, and it's a big deal. So, there was a very famous study from several years ago. Frankly, it was highly controversial. We're not here to discuss the controversy, but it was by Dr. Marty McCary from Johns Hopkins found that 250,000 deaths per year in America were caused by iatrogenesis. That's right. They were caused by healthcare itself, whether it be from medications or from surgeries or from hospital stays and adverse events during the hospital stay. 250,000 deaths is the equivalent of the third leading cause of death in America. So, it's a huge deal. Now, separate from death, it also just causes a lot of suffering. So, let me give you a few examples. One is what is referred to as antibiotic-associated diarrhea. So anytime anyone takes antibiotics, it kills the bad bacteria that are causing, let's say, a pneumonia or a skin infection, but it also kills the good bacteria that are in your intestines. You need bacteria in your colon. It's good for you. Now, when that bacteria in your colon gets killed, it can lead to, it doesn't always, but it can lead to diarrhea. And you've got stomach pain and you've got potential dehydration. I've seen these cases of, you know, young, healthy 23-year-old woman given antibiotics for a sinus infection. And she was in the hospital like every other week for several months because her diarrhea was so bad and it wouldn't go away. She had like eight CT scans. So... It's estimated that about 5 to 35 percent of people who take antibiotics uh, develop antibiotic associated diarrhea. Okay, that's at iatrogenesis. That's iatrogenesis from the medication itself. It's an unwanted side effect that causes harm, the diarrhea, from the medication itself. Now, it can also take the form of surgical procedures. So, there's a surgical procedure called a Nissen fundoplication. I actually uh, was involved in a case for, uh, I, I was like the medical student, I was holding, I was being the retractor for a Nissen fundoplication when I was in medical school. This is done typically by general surgeons as a way of treating really bad heartburn. Guess what they do? They take the stomach and they actually wrap it around. They take part of the stomach and they wrap it around the bottom part of the esophagus. You can kind of see my little, my little cartoon here. And what that does is it prevents the esophagus from slipping up into the chest cavity, which is often the case when people have what's called a hiatal hernia, and it's leading to real bad heartburn and reflux. Well, when they wrap a part of the stomach around the esophagus, if they don't wrap it at just the right degree of tension, then what happens is, is that after the surgery is done, you recover from it, food can get stuck in your esophagus. Essentially, they, they wrap, it's, it's kind of like putting a hot dog in a bun. The hot dog being your esophagus and your stomach being the bun. Well, if they wrap it too tight, then food can get stuck in your esophagus. That's referred to as dysphagia. Guess what happens? Three to 24%, upwards of one in four people, who get a Nissen fundoplication end up having long-term swallowing problems where food gets stuck. Okay, so before a patient has a test or procedure, prescribed medication, then there actually is a process that's referred to as informed con consent. The doctors are supposed to go through with patients. Informed consent says, hey, look, you as a physician, you need to go over, okay, what's the condition that you're treating to? What is the nature of the treatment? In other words, what's the nature of the surgery or the implantable device like a pacemaker or the, or the medication? Okay, what are the anticipated results? What do we think is going to result, happen as a result of this? Are there any alternatives to this treatment that uh, we're discussing here? Either other alternatives or just the, another alternative would be just no treatment at all. What would happen if you didn't get treated at all? Then also the risks of the treatment the compl potential complications of the treatment, 
and also the benefits of the treatment need to be discussed as well. So the point is, is that when the patient is giving you consent to do something medically, it's informed with all these things. Okay, what's being done? Why is it being done? What are the risks of it being done? What are the benefits of it being done? Okay, I will tell you in practicality that this process of informed consent, sometimes the nurses do it. The doctors don't do it. Two, sometimes uh, an intern who's been a doctor literally for two months will do this, and the attending physician will not do this at all. So you mean to tell me a doctor who's only been a doctor for two months is going to be giving adequate informed consent to a patient? Probably not. Also, there's heavy bias on the part of the doctor to like make sure the patient gets this done because like they're on the OR schedule or just you want to help the person and you think that this is like the right thing to do for the person. Like I had a gastroenterologist tell me that he could quote unquote consent anyone he could get anyone to agree to informed consent. Well, arguably, if he could get anyone to agree to informed consent, he was manipulating the informed consent process because there are obviously some people who would be like, no, I don't want to have done whatever needs to get done. Okay, so the idea of, for, of informed consent as a way for patients to understand iatrogenesis is a good idea, but in practical terms, it's, it's kind of skewed. Okay, now, what are the costs associated with Iatrogenesis, harm from healthcare. So, there. Um, I'll leave a link in the show notes to this study, but they look specifically at hospital inpatient iatrogenesis costs, and they found that the hospital itself, when there was a, a, a situation of iatrogenesis, when the when the hospital itself caused harm or there was a side effect, etc., that it ended up costing the hospital uh, two hundred thirty eight dollars per patient, not per patient. Um, with, with iatrogenesis itself, just averaged across all their patients. Now, however, that was only the cost that was borne by the hospital. They found that the hospital was able to then transfer, because we got third-party payment, right? We got Medicare, we got Medicaid, we got commercial insurance, that the hospital was then able to pass on the costs of the error or the complication or the side effect for $1,775 per patient. So in other words, if you add the two up, the 238 plus the 1,775, it gets you to $2,013 total on average per patient. That's a res that is a result of complication, et cetera. Again, that's not per patient that suffers iatrogenesis. That's averaged across all of their admits. And so if you do the math on it, the 1775 divided by the, the 2013 means that 88% of the costs were then passed on to the third-party payer of Medicare, Medicaid, or commercial insurance. So... Now, this study was done in 2007, so that's $2,007. So in order to make this relatable to today, we got to apply healthcare cost inflation to it. Now, I went to the Bureau of Labor Statistics for that number, and the number that they get have on average, so I li literally took the in healthcare inflation for every single year, and I averaged it out, and on average for, that, for the 14-year period between 2007 and today, it's 3.3% per year, which seems kind of low, but we're st still going to go with that. So fine, so if you apply the 3.3% per year, of inflation to the the 2013 dollars, that gets you up to 3,180 dollars in 2021 dollars. Okay, fine. Then again, you take not all that is borne by the third party payers. Only 88 percent of it is borne by Medicare, Medicaid, commercial insurance. So let's take the 3,180, multiply it by 0.88, and that gets you 2,798 dollars. Now. Not all that, since we deal mostly with employer-sponsored health insurance here on A Healthcare Z, not all that is borne by employers. So what percent is borne by commercial insurance? Well, again, hospital revenue is typically about 40% commercial insurance, 40% Medicare, and about 10% Medicaid, and then 10% self-pay. So let's just take the 2798 and then multiply it by 40%, because that would be the, the part that commercial insurance is bearing. And that gets you to $1,119 per patient. Again, that's per patient across all their admins. So in the most recent year, I think that's on record. Again, I'll leave a link to all this in the show notes. Is 2019, there were 36.2 million admits to hospitals in America in that year. So if you take the $1,119 multiplied by the 36.2 million admits, that gets you $40.5 billion dollars of iatrogenesis costs that are borne by commercial insurance plans, i.e. 
employers in America, right? Because insurance is just the, the funding mechanism that processes the transaction for employers and they're then charging the, the employers the premium. So $40.5 billion a year is charged to commercial insurance plans. Well, there's 155 million people on commercial insurance plans in America, according to the most recent Kaiser Family Foundation of 2021. I'll leave a link to that in the show notes as well. So if you take the $40.5 billion divided by the 155 million people that are on commercial insurance plans, it comes down to $261 per member per year. And on average, there's two members for every one subscriber or employees on the plan. So if you wanted to get it in terms of per employee per year cost, you take the 261, you multiply it by two. That's $522 per employee per year that employers are paying for inpatient-only hospital iatrogenesis, hospital and doctor-created harm. Costs employers $522 per employer per year. Divide that by 12, that means employers are paying $44.50 per employee per month for iatrogenesis. What's that called? More than your ASO fee. It's costing you more to than a self-funded plan would pay Blue Cross United, Cigna, or Aetna to administer their entire plan. And this is just hospital inpatient iatrogenesis. This doesn't take into account any outpatient iatrogenesis. So when you take into account the potential deaths, the suffering, and the cost from iatrogenesis, especially on a per employee, per month level, and it gets hidden, right? Because it's in the claims. You don't see a line item in your reporting from your ASO. Okay, here are your iatrogenesis costs. But it's there, and it's costing you like $44.50 per employee per month. So if we work in healthcare, we have to understand iatrogenesis. It's a serious topic. Thank you for watching.